Aaron Count Sage Dynamics, and this is the Ballistic Advantage Hansen Series Barrels. So the confession I have to make is I'm not an AR builder. Uh, I'm actually a little weird about that. I know how to assemble an AR. I know which parts to go in. I know what to choose. I know how to stake and, and you know, what needs Loctite and what doesn't and what springs to use and what detents and how to not use cheap parts. But I prefer to leave it to the professionals. So I've been through three armors courses, but three armors courses is not a gunsmith make. The two words aren't even the same, and they don't mean the same thing, even though some people consider it to be interchangeable, they're not. Uh, so I generally leave the assembly uh, of an AR platform rifle to a professional. I like to buy it from whoever the manufacturer is. Uh, that way I get a warranty, and I know that there was a degree of QC, and it's someone who professionally builds these rifles versus um, me being more of like a hobby or a recreational builder, if you were. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with building your own rifle. I understand a lot of people do it for budgetary concerns or because they can't find exactly what they want features wise in the rifles that are out there. Uh, so I'm not knocking people who build their own guns by any stretch of the imagination. I've seen some very, very well assembled rifles by people who knowledgeably put the time into researching exactly what they wanted down to the gas port size, spring, buffer weight, bulk carry group, what material, what steel was used, all of those factors that went into the rifle. But I also have a very, very large sample size of people who assembled rifles with cheap parts and they couldn't make it through the first day of a two-day rifle course. And this is one of the reasons why I prefer to go to professional builders is even though I know how to build a rifle, I'd much rather leave it to a professional. Now, getting back to that, the features that you want, one of the things that we, we, we look for in a rifle, of course, is inherent accuracy. We want a barrel, uh, along with the other things that factor into it, but they're more peripheral to what the barrel is able to do. On the AR platform, how accurate is a barrel going to be? And that's something that we desire. And because of the internet, and actually pre-internet really, people have this desire to shoot extremely tight groups, which of course there's no reason why you shouldn't, but sometimes they have an unrealistic expectation of what an AR is going to be capable of depending on what quality of barrel they go with. Generally, uh, when you want extreme precision out of an AR-223556, you've got to go with somebody like Compass Lake or Craddock, or if SMOS was still selling barrels to the general public, you could go there. And of course, there's other, you know, Sheelan is another big one. I have a Sheelan barrel PWS that's a sub-MOA 12-inch gun, and it's great. Sub and way doesn't necessarily mean that all your bullet holes are going to touch each other at, at 100 meters or 100 yards. Some people don't like, oh, that's a crappy group. I'm like, ah, measure it. Oh, yeah, is it under an inch? That's sub MOA. So when it comes time to build a rifle, choosing a barrel, uh, you, need, you want something that's going to be accurate. So Ballistic Advantage reached out to me. They wanted to send me out some barrels. And while I was a little apprehensive because I'm not a builder, I was like, you know what? I can, throw, I can throw some guns together and see what kind of performance I get out of a barrel that when you look at the MSRP on a Ballistic Advantage versus, like I said, Compass Lake or Craddock, and of course this isn't a, this isn't a comparison video, but I'm just mentioning those as well-known, reputable, accurate barrels. Um, are you going to be able to get the same accuracy for sometimes a quarter of the price? This review is a little different from what I normally do because it's three barrels. I've got an 11, a 12, and a 16. Uh, and I don't think I've done a specific barrel review in the past. This might be my first one and that's cool. Uh, so I had the three barrels. I chose BCM uppers, upper receivers to go with because I've known them to be consistently within spec. Uh, and initial impressions assembling three different uh, uppers uh, is the fit was tight. I didn't have to, like I said, uh, I didn't have to jump off a building. Uh, to beat this barrel into the upper receiver. I did have to heat it up a little bit, beat it in there with the rubble ma mallet. Um, so the fit was good, but it wasn't so tight or so oversized for that extreme fitment that I was having to buy special tools or basically get that upper receiver glowing red hot in order to get the barrel into it, which isn't something I wanted to do. So I would consider the fit to be a little Goldilocks. It's just right. It's going to go in there well. Uh, now this is the Hansen profile, their proprietary profile barrel. 
which is slightly different from what you might see from a government standard or some of the other variations that are out there. Um, everything went together like it should. You know, getting it in the receiver was easy. Uh, gas blocks fit nice, but they weren't too loose. Uh, I have bought some very expensive precision barrels in the past where the gas block basically dropped on there and run around like I was throwing rings at the carnival, and that's not something that I want. One thing that I did find a little curious about their 16-inch barrels, it does have a cross pan, a cross roll pan underneath the gas block for retention. Um, there is some contention out there in the precision shooting world when it comes to the AR platform that that can affect harmonics, attenuation, whatever terminology you want to use, and cause you to shoot slightly less accurate because of the way that that pan interfaces with the barrel, loss of material, heat sink, different things heating up. Um, all these other factors that can go into it, there's way more science than, than I'm willing to apply to a gas block, and that's why, again, I leave that to professionals. Uh, so that was something I was I was going to be paying attention to during the review process. Was that actually going to affect accuracy? Of course, I didn't have a 16-inch ballistic advantage to compare the two, but I wanted to see if the overall performance of the rifle, as far as accuracy concerned, was going to be um, not as good as I would expect out of a 16-inch gun. General performance was great. I mean, we're just talking about a barrel, right? So taking accuracy and setting that aside for a second the only thing the barrel needs to do is feed the ammunition it needs to not cause feeding issues with the feed ramps it needs to stay locked up nice and tight and it needs to interface with whatever accessories you're putting on it without any problems and the gas box needs to be secure and the, and the coating and the tolerances need to be well where you'd want them to be uh, so setting the accuracy aside which we're going to get into the on all three guns i had no issues uh or, you know i generally shoot 55 grain at the range, but I also shoot a lot of 75 and 77 TMK, uh, and for precision checks I shoot Black Hills, which can feed strangely in strange feed ramps. So the feed ramps, uh, your, well, your ability to feed ammunition into the barrel uh, worked exactly like it was supposed to, so I wasn't having any weird quality control issues there. I got a sample size of three as far as feed ramps are concerned, and all three barrels performed exactly like I would want them to, meaning they fed the ammunition I put in the gun, and it's not something I had to think about or be concerned with. As to the barrel specifics, uh, what you're actually getting feature-wise for people that are interested in this, and you should be, you should know, at least if you're going to be a builder, you should be aware of what materials and what coatings you want. Uh, it's 4150 chrome molly uh, vandalum, which is a pretty common barrel material. It's been known to be very venerable, very resilient, very reliable. They went with a QPQ corrosion resistant finish. Um, you've got different gas lengths depending on which, what, which barrel we're talking about. I don't like the pistol length gas block. That system length, it's uh, somewhat common on your shorter barrels. I've seen it even on 11 inch. It's more obviously more common on sevens and tens, but it's something that's out there. Twist rate is one and seven, which is actually my preferred twist rate. Uh, a lot of companies have gone to a one and eight kind of a compromise, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with a one and eight twist. It can still handle, handle the heavier rounds, but I tend to shoot heavier rounds unless I'm literally just shooting close distance practice. If I'm getting further back than 25 yards, I'm going to a heavier grain. I'm gonna shoot a 75 or a 77. Uh, I like those heavier weights. If I'm shooting precision, I'm definitely shooting a 77 grain. Uh, all across my precision AR platforms, that 77 grain Black Hills has been my go-to round. Uh, Magtech makes a really good 77 grain as well. Uh, but that's the round I want to use, so I want a twist rate that can handle that round. And I do shoot 77 grain even out of 11 and 12 inch guns if I'm going for extreme precision. If I'm shooting, even if I'm shooting on a red dot at steel, 50, 100, 150, 200 meters, that's what I'm going to shoot it on. And all my guns are zeroed uh, on that 77 grain Black Hills because it's the best round for me to zero with. So when I shoot 55 grain, I got a little point of aim, point of impact variance based on the, the lighter round. But again, like I said, inside of 25 is usually the only time I'm going to shoot that 55 grain unless I'm just kind of screwing around. All three barrel lengths got a lot of use suppressed, which I want to bring up specifically because some barrels don't like you to put suppressors on them. They perform pretty well uh, unsuppressed, and then you throw a suppressor on them and things just fall apart. Uh, you get short cycling or you got to change and start experimenting with buffer weights and things like that. Uh, I used Surefire and OSS cans uh, on the three guns. Uh, two of the guns take the OSS, one takes a Surefire, and I had no reliability issues with, with the actual gas performance of the gun itself. Uh, so that wasn't an issue whatsoever. It wasn't something that we had to address, and I spent a lot of time shooting all three guns depending on what we were doing. Now, for accuracy, we're looking at that 16-inch. How accurate is the barrel? Because ultimately, that's the question people want to ask. Once you know that the barrel is going to feed ammunition, 
And for those of you that are going to get suppressors or have suppressors, it's going to cycle reliably with the suppressor on it. Uh, how's it going to do when you shoot for accuracy for records? So I'm using the 16 inch for that, of course, 100 yards. And let's start off with that benchmark. Does the gun shoot MOA at 100 yards? So here's a five round group fired with 77 grain Black Hills at 100 yards. So with an MSRP that is half or less a competitor barrel, I'm shooting sub MOA. In fact, that group is just under 0.5. So I'm getting in a bolt gun territory, uh, shooting at 100 yards. That's cool. Don't get me wrong. That's a very tight group. That's a group that everybody pictures in their head when they hear sub MOA, even though there are sub sub MOA groups I've seen where none of the holes touch each other. Because uh, sub and way means just under an inch, so depending on how specific you want to get in your measurements, that can be a pretty wide group, relatively speaking. But I was able to put all the bullets in the same geographical position on that target to shoot just under half him away, which is really impressive. Like I said, that's getting into bolt gun territory. But that's only at 100 yards. What if I double the distance? Let's see how it did at 200 yards. I don't care who you are, you have to be happy with that. 200 yards, I'm still sub MOA, which you would expect, right? If a gun shoots sub MOA at 100 yards, you would expect it to shoot sub MOA at 200 yards. That's usually the case. Uh, the range I'm on has a limitation. I can only go out to 300 yards, so that's the furthest I was able to shoot the rifle, uh, that 16-inch gun, but let's go ahead and see how it did at 300 yards. Yeah, still sub MOA. Really impressive group for 300 yards. I was very pleased with the performance and it was repeatable. Uh, that was actually um, one of the better groups that I shot, even though none of them patterned wider than an MOA, one MOA. So I'm still shooting under one MOA uh, at 300 yards, which I don't really know what more you could ask for. Uh, performance wise now if I had the ability I'd put it on paper out to four and five hundred meters but or yards because everybody for some reason wants everything in yards um, I'd put it on paper at those distances as well I just don't have the ability to do that at the ranges ranges that I have access to the first I can get out is 300 yards so that's what you get but 300 yards still sub away uh, still under that one MOA standard that, that everybody wants as far as accuracy goes I'm very very happy with the accuracy um, I really couldn't ask for more realistically. I mean, if I had a wish list or if I was rubbing a lamp, I'd be like, yeah, I wanted to shoot that nice tight group at all distances, but that's just not realistic. So groups are gonna open up as distance increases, human factors become more apparent, um, and all your other accessories start getting a smaller, smaller, or light, slightly larger vote and how well the rifle's able to perform at distance. Glass wasn't a problem, trigger wasn't a problem, stock wasn't a problem, the rifle's lockup was good, even though that has nothing to do with the barrel. So I had everything working for me correctly so the only thing I had left to do when it came to shooting the rifle accurately was have a barrel that was capable of that accuracy. And the Ballistic Advantage Hanson profile barrels are definitely capable. I know some of you are scratching your heads right now and you're like, well, what about the burn down? If you're familiar, I don't do burn downs on what I consider to be precision guns because I don't expect them to be able or to be required to maintain that consistent high rate of fire. Um, like you'd get from a general use uh, rifle. And some people disagree with that, but you know what, it's my system, so I make the rules. Uh, and when it comes to precision guns, I just don't think realistically you're gonna maintain a round count that high for that long and that short, do it in such a short period of time to get those guns, you know, thousand degrees plus. So there's not really a whole lot more that needs to be said about Ballistic Advantage Barrel. If you're looking for a more inexpensive barrel that's going to provide you with a high degree of accuracy, again, I only have a sample size of three here, uh, but they all three performed consistently well regardless of barrel length. So I was still getting really good accuracy at 11, the 12, and of course the 16 is the one I shot for record for this video. If you're looking to build a more special purpose precision AR platform for hunting, target shooting, uh, whatever you're whatever you're planning on doing with it this is a barrel that you can save a little bit money on and assemble it with other quality parts and you're going to get a very accurate rifle which can hang with those higher end precision barrels for the ar rifle i'm very pleased with the ballistic advantage barrel and if i do ever plan on building another ar personally uh, these are the barrels that are probably going to go in it i'm aaron count with sage dynamics train accordingly